Konnichiwa, this is the Shogunstein, and this is some initial thoughts on meat mahjong. Learn the fundamentals of the classic game, two in one Chinese and American mahjong, and it's from Think Fun and Ravensburger. This is a sort of training mini version of both the Americanized and traditional Chinese mahjong game. Just in the interest of full disclosure, we were sent a copy for review purposes from Amazon Vine. So just in the interest of being transparent, they did send us a copy for review. So this is the Meet Mahjong format. It is a simpler, um, more basic version of the actual American or Chinese version. I say that because a lot of uh, people might have you know, an app on their phone where they're playing some sort of Mahjong but that's more of a kind of a matching tile game and is not exactly the same. The tiles might be similar, but it's not exactly uh, traditional Mahjong. I, I used to have that on my, my phone. So whenever I think of Mahjong, I think of a, a funny story that happened to me the first time I went to the People's Republic of China back in 1998. My grandmother in Brooklyn, my Jewish grandmother, was uh, a big fan of playing Mahjong. She played Mahjong quite a bit. In fact, uh, Mrs. Shogunstein, who is actually Chinese, Malaysian Chinese, has often reminded me that my Jewish grandmother plays more Mahjong than she does. So um, when I was in China that first time, my grandmother had asked me to pick up a uh, Mahjong set to bring back for her. And when I was in Beijing, and I had like a, some time on my own. I remember walking around, and uh, one of the first vendors on the street that I saw was selling what looked like an antique Mahjong set. It was beautiful, had these nice tiles, and it was a little dirty because it was old. It was a little dusty, and it just was like a traditional, you know, tiles with beautiful characters, and I saw it. And, uh, you know, I did some bargaining as best I could. I didn't know at the time that there were three levels of prices. There was, uh, you know, like sort of tourist price, Chinese tourist price, and then local price. So I got what I thought was a good price, but it was probably still higher than the Chinese tourist price or the uh, local price because they charged me the, the, the foreign price. But that's okay because at eight to a dollar, you know, you're, again, you're arguing over just a couple cents. But... I got this set, and I was pretty proud that I bargained, that I found this antique Marjan set. I remember saying, when I get home, I'm going to clean, you know, dust it off. Because, you know, it was old, it was antique, that's why it was dusty. Little did I know, throughout the rest of my trip to China, which was a month, I saw that same Marjan set at pretty much every street corner where they were selling what in uh, Yiddish we might say are tchotchkes. Uh, there would be like these little old Chinese style reading glasses. So that Mahjong set was everywhere. It was the same antique looking Mahjong set, but it had the dirt in the same spot. Everywhere you went to, you saw it because I saw it for the rest of the trip. It wasn't an antique, but somewhere there was a factory in China making a fake antique Mahjong set to the point where it had the, the dirt and the dust in the same spot to make it look like a, an antique. But anyway, I brought it home and uh, my grandmother was very happy with it. So this game is a uh, sort of a teaching game combining, you know, there are the options. There are two different rule books for the traditional Chinese version. And then there is the Americanized version. And the difference, you know, bottom line is the difference in the Chinese version. You're going to use both sets and runs, whereas in the American version, that is mostly just sets. Also, the uh, book contains some of the background of the person who came up with this sort of teaching system, and also there's some information on uh, cultural um, consultation. If you may remember a couple of years ago on Twitter, um, some people had designed an Americanized version of Mahjong and uh, 
posted some pictures of the Americanized tiles, and Twitter kind of, at least board game Twitter, kind of blew up and uh, was not very happy with some of the usual uh, suspects on board game Twitter. So I see this edition, which is designed by, uh, you know, uh, Cara Jill Weisberg, uh, does have a cultural consultant um, from Sen Fung Lim, who's designed uh, a bunch of different games. This also kind of reminds me a little bit of a much smaller box game that I had purchased maybe last year, and it was sort of also a teaching Mahjong game that uh, used cards and chips, and it was something like Not Your Ma's Mahjong, and uh, that game had an interesting backstory because the two inventors were a married couple. Uh, the husband, I think, was... Uh, white and Jewish, and the wife was Chinese, and both of their grandmothers, the way they were able to communicate, and the way that they, uh, if I'm getting remembering the story correctly, that was the commonality between his grandmother and her grandmother was the the mahjong game. So again, you have information on the, the designer, the cultural consultation, consultation, and uh, the instructions were very easy to follow. Me and Little Shogunstein. Um, have never played the, the traditional Mahjong. We've played uh, Dragon Castle, which is a great game that uses Mahjong tiles, but uses it more like that app in the solitaire uh, version on your phone than traditional Mahjong. It's got those beautiful tiles. So we had never played the, the real way. We've played the app. We've played uh, uh, the, the, the castle um, version, but um, never played this way. And the rules were very easy to follow. So the rule book, kudos, without any kind of um, video, the, the rules were very easy to follow. But again, this is sort of a, you know, condensed, more basic version than the, the full game. So with that said, we, we quite enjoyed it. Um, it didn't take us long to to get through the rules, so the rules are well written. I enjoyed the, the little backstory because again, it always reminds me, like I said at the beginning of the video, but you know, my my wife who's Chinese telling me that uh, you know my Jewish grandmother plays more mahjong than uh, she does. So when I when I read um, you know the little again the the backstory here and then the backstory on that uh, not your ma's mahjong, you know, I can kind of uh, relate to it. Uh, a little bit and again you also do have some cultural consultation here and uh, some other resources for more stuff on mahjong my favorite mahjong scene in the movie is in uh, rush hour 2 when uh, jackie chan runs across uh, don Cheadle, and they're playing mahjong in the back of that uh, store the only complaint that i would have about this game and I don't know if it would affect the, the, the price point. And again, this is where, you know, Dragon Castle is not that expensive a game, and they used actual tiles. Here, it's good cardboard, but it's still cardboard. I wish they had put in actual Mahjong tiles. Again, that card game used cards and chips. This is using just these cardboard. And again, it's, it's good quality cardboard. This is at least, you know, heavy cardboard. This is not going to... You know, unless you really try, these are these are going to last. But I do like the feel of the, the tiles. So I'm going to have to look at those uh, Dragon Castle tiles or see if I can uh, find a uh, Mahjong set. I've seen Mahjong sets on Amazon that aren't that expensive, so I wish they had used real tiles. But if the goal of this is to teach people the basics of Mahjong, both the American and the traditional Chinese version, I think it's been successful. Now, of course, there are people in, in board gaming that always love, you know, my friend Board Game Bullocks, you know, just did a great video on Risk and uh, you know, talked about, you know, how some people in, in board gaming, you know, kind of like to always one-up on those classic games. So I'm sure, you know, just like with Risk, there are people, oh, why don't you play, you know, History Through the Ages, that's a much better game or this or that. So I'm sure there are some people that are maybe like, oh, there are better games than Mahjong. I've seen people do games better than chess. Chess has been around for how many years? People still love chess. I don't think I'd ever, you know, make a video about games better than, than chess. So I'm sure there are some people who are going to be like, oh, there are games better than Mahjong. But the bottom line is this game's been around for a long time. And uh, again, at least I know um, 
in, in, in my family, it was a game that my grandmother loved very much, and she played for uh, a long time. And, uh, you know, it was very popular here. In the, at least it was very popular at one point in the States and, of course, very popular in, in China. So it teaches, you know, what could be a, a more complicated game or a game that uh, people are playing incorrectly because they're used to playing it on the, the Android. So, um, again, I wish it was tiles, but good quality. And the important thing is that uh, the rules... And we didn't have to go to a video or anything. We didn't have to watch Watch It Play it or anything. The rules were very uh, well written, and we were able to get the the basics of this game, which is something you know I'm I'm 51 and I never knew how to you know do the basics here. So um, if that was the goal, if the goal was here to you know sort of be a you know a primer, just as there are games you know teach chess that have all kinds of simpler rules to teach people how to move the chess pieces. If that was the goal here with the, the Mahjong, uh, they were successful. And again, if the goal here was also to take people that may be used to the American version and introduce them to the Chinese version or vice versa, I think they did that as well. So uh, I know this game, we're gonna. this will be a keeper. This will be a game we'll probably bring to my side hustle in... Uh, you know, uh, involving uh, education, because this would be something that we could probably bring to the classroom as well. So good job with uh, Think Fun and Meet Mahjong. Again, just uh, to be transparent, we did get a review copy. Um, it did what it was supposed to do, and we had fun, and I think we're going to keep playing this, and we'll see how long before we go to the, to the full deal. And again, the only thing I would suggest or maybe see if there's a way to do it is I would just maybe switch out the, the cardboard pieces for the, you know, the actual tiles. So I'm going to see if maybe I can do that with my, my Dragon Castle. Maybe we're going to play Dragon Castle again because that's a, that's a really good game. But again, it's not traditional Mahjong, but it's a good modern board game using those Mahjong tiles. And again, if you're looking for something that's maybe a little smaller um, footprint, Look for that, and again, I may be getting the title wrong. It was something like, not your ma, like M-A, ma Zhang, and that was a little card game that used, instead of tiles, cards, and little poker chips to teach the basics of ma Zhang. And again, that was a, a great little story with that Chinese-Jewish couple, which is something I can relate to because, you know, uh, you know, my marriage is, is kind of the same way with, uh, again, my wife being Malaysian Chinese and me being Jewish. Anyway, meet Mahjong. We enjoyed it. Good job. Think fun. Shogunstein out.